Next thing we want to take a look at here is uh, what they're giving us. So they're saying that, you know, given this diagram here, AB is congruent to AD. So let's go ahead and mark that on the diagram. Those are congruent. And it says that uh, BC is not congruent to DC. Okay, good. And what we want to prove is that AC, okay, doesn't bisect angle BAD. So we want to prove that this, okay, does not bisect this angle BAD. Okay, so when you do an indirect proof, the first thing you want to do is take what you're trying to prove and temporarily assume that the opposite is true. Okay, so do you understand? So you take what you're trying to prove and you temporarily assume that the opposite is true. So I'm just going to write this down. So let's just assume, okay, temporarily, uh, that AC, okay, we'll just say ray AC does bisect angle BAD. Okay, so you're with me so far? So then, if we assume that this does bisect, then we know that the measure of angle one is equal to the measure of angle two, uh, and that's by the definition of an angle bisector. So definition of angle bisector. So this is more of like a paragraph type proof as opposed to a two column proof. So now we know that angle one is congruent to angle two, so I'm just gonna mark that on our diagram. And we also know that uh, AC is congruent to AC, okay, it's congruent to itself, and that's by, I'll just put in parentheses here, reflexive property, right, reflexive, anything is congruent to itself. And so what you notice here is that this triangle and this triangle are congruent. So this is triangle BAC is congruent to triangle DAC, and the reason would be by the side angle side. Okay, side angle side. So now that we know that these two triangles are congruent, we can say that BC is congruent to DC, and that's by the CPCTC, which means that the corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Once we prove these two triangles are congruent, the parts that match up, meaning BC and DC, will also be congruent. Okay, however, what do we notice here? However, this is a contradiction of one of the givens. So whenever you get a contradiction of a, of a given or something that you know that is true, like all the angles in a triangle led up to 180 or you know, parallel lines don't intersect or a known fact or one of the givens, then you've reached a contradiction. So however, this contradicts, okay, this contradicts, contradicts the given, okay? Therefore, okay, that's what these three dots represent here. Therefore, AC, okay, ray AC must not bisect angle BAD. And that's exactly what we were trying to prove from the very beginning. So what we did, okay, and what you do with an indirect proof is you go about it in, obviously, like, like it sounds, an indirect way. Instead of starting from the givens like we normally do in a proof and then reason logically in order until we get to what we're trying to prove, we're actually saying, hey, you know, let's just throw that whole thing out. Let's just assume that what we're trying to prove that, that the opposite is true, okay? And we reason based on that temporary assumption, okay? In this case, we're assuming that AC does not, uh, I'm sorry, it does bisect angle BAD. This says does not. Well, we assume the opposite, that it does be a, uh, bisect angle BAD. And you reason from there until you get a contradiction of the given or a known fact. And that's exactly what happened here. So we said, hey, you know, our original assumption, okay, right here, that it does bisect angle BAD must be false. And the opposite is true. And so therefore, you can then assume that what you were trying to prove is in fact true. So I hope this helped you to understand a little bit better how to work with indirect proofs. Subscribe to the channel, check out more math tutoring videos on my YouTube channel, Mario's Math Tutoring, and I'll see you in the next video. I'll talk to you soon.